Here we are, at 1.30 in the morning, down by Lake Stelice, looking up at the Milky Way above our heads and doing some astro photography. Two hours ago it was rainy and cloudy, and not in a million years did I think that we would get back up so early after hitting the hay. But that's what weather do, weather changes, and photographers adapt. And it is my experience that if you are spontaneous and go the extra mile, more often than not nature rewards you. And this early, early morning was the perfect example of that and a perfect start for the workshop up here in the Alps. In this video I will cover the workshop around Matterhorn and later near Mont Blanc in Chamonix. I will share many of the group's photos, like this one from Gargi, from the same night down by Lake Stelice. A beautiful photograph, well done. And this one from up by the Fluhalp the same evening, photographed by Krishna. Well captured mate. After we had finished our short astro session, we went back to sleep before getting up a few hours later for our mandatory morning workout, photographing the Matterhorn getting hit by the morning's first light. This morning I first tried my luck on a blue hour photograph. I think it came out quite well and I really like how quiet the Matterhorn looks in the cold blue light. Afterwards we all tried our luck on some panoramas shortly after the sun hit the mountain and we got some lovely results like this photograph from Krishna. My father on the other hand snuck away and grabbed this creative composition of by the lake's end. After breakfast I took the group up to a moraine, a ridge formed and shaped by the glacier just behind the Fluhalp. Me and my father had checked out this moraine the day before and from this vantage point we had a pretty good overview of the Fluhalp and the Matterhorn as well as the beautiful rivers down below us. They almost seemed like veins of the earth from where we stood and I took this abstract photograph of these rivers down below. I find it quite unique and it slowly became one of my favorites from the whole adventure. This just shows that a telelens is in my book one of the most important lenses you can bring on a hike in the mountains. It just gives a lot of room for creativity. Afterwards we continued on the Five Lakes hike, stopping and photographing by Grinchse before we eventually, towards the end of the day, ended up down in Zermatt. We had planned a short walk up to a vantage point overlooking the city wanting to capture the town and the Matterhorn just when the evening arrived. Another magical moment for me. And then, the first day of the workshop was over. The plan for today is quite simple. We're gonna get in our car and we're gonna leave Zermatt, leave Matterhorn and go to another mountain, Mont Blanc. We're gonna drive to Chamonix, park the car there and then we're gonna hike up to the Lac Blanc uh, Refugee. And we're gonna hope for some good weather and not fog and rain as it looks like now. So we're gonna go, go up and photograph the sunrise and the Mont Blanc reflection and all those beautiful mountains and lakes up there. So I really can't wait. I have never been there before, so this will be completely new for me. And uh, from what I've seen, it's, it's just something you need to look forward to. <laughs> this is going to be great. So we're going to get in our car and we're going to drive to Chamonix now. But first we're going to get some breakfast. All right.
And so it began, our climb up to Lac Blanc Refuge. We took the route starting from Col des Montets, and the hike itself is about 9 kilometers with an altitude gain of almost a thousand meters. We spent over four hours on our way up to Lac Blanc, a bit longer than most people, but the reason for that was the fog. A thick, thick blanket of clouds making the landscape impossible to make out. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, I had never taken this hike before in my life and no one in the group had taken this hike either. Now this is a well-marked hike with signs left and right. However, there are side paths out to vantage points all over and some of these paths are as well trodden as the main path and when you can't make out more than 5 meters in front of you, you sometimes can't be sure which path is the main path and which path is a detour out to a vantage point or a lake and if that detour eventually connects with the main path or where it connects in the first place. Now this is all very confusing, but from walking in the mountains back in Norway, I have tremendous respect for low cloud coverage, and I know from experience how easily it is to get turned around. So we took it slow. Slow enough to get it right, but fast enough to get to Lac Blanc before nightfall. So we're well over halfway up to Lac Blanc, but as things are looking now, I doubt there will be any chance of seeing it. But we would do well to hit the refugee before nightfall, which is in two hours. Because come darkness, we won't be able to see anything. So we need to press on for a bit. That being said, this fog made me feel like I was back on Patton Beach in Lofoten all over again. The shapes peeking out, the trees out on the edges hinting of something more. Something we knew was out there. Something we couldn't see, something huge. A mountain, a glacier, a proper beast. The one and only Mont Blanc. And after tumbling and photographing our way through the fog, we eventually came to a sign which read Les Lacs de Jaserie. And at that point, the cloud coverage lifted. Oh, it's... Just a bit. Oh. oh my god. There's another one down there. Just enough that we could see the refuge. No way. Good. There it is. And it was a sight for sore eyes, lifting our spirits a lot. We were nearly there, and even if we knew deep down that we were on the right path, seeing the hut there on the mountainside, confirming it once and for all, felt pretty, pretty good. A minute later it was back to fog, but with newfound strength we easily walked the last bit up to the hut. It just gave us a bit of hope. Yeah. And then... No, I think it'll clear up. Sometimes nature doesn't give you what you want, but it gives you what you need. And we saw, we saw the cabin. We are nearly there. We went to sleep looking forward to unwrap the landscape photography present, which was all around us 360 degrees, but we hadn't seen a thing of so far. And the next morning we got up and went down to Lac Blanc in order to photograph the mountains and reflections getting hit by the morning's first light. Oh wow, all the stuff we couldn't see yesterday.
look at this. Like yesterday when we were working through the fog up here, we just had no idea what we were walking amongst. All these glaciers and the, these tips of these huge towering mountains. We were right beside them, we didn't know. And this morning, when it was dark, we just could see the silhouettes of them hinting that they were there. And then when the sun gradually rose, everything just unveiled for us for the first time. That is the beauty of fog. It was almost like unwrapping a present. We had hiked all the way up here through the fog, hadn't seen a thing, and then slowly everything unveiled itself. That was one of the mo more magical moments in my life. Right behind me now is Mont Blanc, the tall one, the tallest in this chain here. And it's uh, approximately 4,808.74 meters high, at least according to the last measurement done in 2017. And that's the point, they don't exactly know how high it is, because the snow varies from, from uh, year to year. And that's why they call it Mont Blanc, because Mont, Mont means top and Blanc means white. So the, the top is always white, there's always snow there, it's never barren. So that's Mont Blanc, but over here we have a cloud inversion. And according to people who work up here, that is actually pretty rare. It was the first one she'd seen, she said. And yesterday morning, when we were photographed by Lac Blanc, this place was covered with uh, this really orange background and coloring the clouds. So I really wish I'd been up here to see that. But looking at this now, it's extraordinary. And that rock there in the middle. I've used my long lens and took so many pictures of that. Absolutely love it. And the blue silhouetted mountains in the background. It's fantastic. It's really, really, really nice. This, this, has been, this has been a great trip so far. Yesterday, through the fog, not finding the way, getting, getting here, eating really, really good dinner, good soup, getting up early. We actually stood up this night and watched the Milky Way, but we didn't photograph it. And we got back to bed, got back up again, photographed the sun, sunrise down by Lac Blanc and up here and discovering that there is a cloud inversion happening as well. Just the, it's just great. So Cal, yeah. what do you think about the cloud inversion? <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. So we have just started our descent down towards the car again. 
So down here, here is Lac de Jezerie. Our first photography stop for the day. No, not the first actually, it's the, it's the fourth. <laughs> I'm often nervous before venturing forth on trips dedicated to photography, especially if they are abroad and not easily accessible on a day-to-day -day basis. I worry that I won't get any photographs worth mentioning, that I somehow will miss the beauty or fail to tell the tale behind the photographs if I do get them. This fear eventually goes away during the trip, but before I travel I often find myself asking the same question. What will qualify this photography trip as successful? Is it the number of photographs that I'm happy with? Is it whether or not I managed to speak coherent sentences in front of the camera? Or is it the people I met? The food I ate? Is it the quiet moments, the little things, the memories? Now that I've been back almost two months and I think back on this adventure, there is this one moment that stands out to me. And it was back at the Lac Blanc refuge in the middle of the night. I was heading to the toilet in the main building and I stepped outside into the night and I looked up, seeing more stars than I've ever seen in my life. And then I look off into the distance and I see for the first time the outline of Mont Blanc and the neighboring mountains, just silhouettes against the starry sky. There is no photograph of this, no video vlog. But this feeling, this moment for me personally, this I will carry with me for the rest of my life. So when people ask me when I get back from photography trips whether it was successful or not, I always answer yes. I always answer yes, but maybe not for the reasons you may think. Thank you for watching, take care of each other, and I see you out there. Thank you.